and guess what? We're all, we're flying through the show, things are happening, and it is my turn to do some stand-up. Your Ooh. host, Stacey Axler. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right, here we go. I am realizing that I should start like a whole section of comedy for things people yell at me from their cars. <laughs> this week is no exception to that. I don't know what it is, but I think because so many less people are driving, the erratic drivers have only gotten more erratic. Has anyone else noticed that? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, I've noticed just even from my very sparse going and coming from my home, I'm like, wow, people are driving really bad. I was trying to cross Georgia Avenue a few days ago, and a car was making an illegal turn and did not stop for me, just continued to drive. So I had to stop for the car. And the driver shouted at me, go to hell, and like continued to drive off. And it's like, come on, man, I've tried. Like, I've tried <laughs> to go there on my own volition. You can't go. You have to be invited to go. <laughs> Just dig a hole and find yourself in there. Because, trust me, I want to know what goes on down there, too. But not everyone can know. No one can know. <laughs> Every, anyway, and you might have picked this up if you're just tuning in to watch this, but uh, many performers here are Jewish, including myself. <laughs> we don't even believe in hell, so I'll never know what goes on there. Another thing <laughs> Jewish people can't do is, anyway, la 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 la. What's up next? <laughs> That's my new segue. I don't even do segues anymore. Here's one. <laughs> Who in school read the book Lord of the Flies? Me. Yep. Many people here. I, I did. I did. Basically, if you haven't read it, I'm pretty sure you know what it's about. It's about a bunch of shipwrecked children outside of the confines of society. They, their civilization breaks down on a deserted island, and they begin, for lack of a better word, to eat each other. And then they get rescued. And I think about that a lot because the message of that book, what we would always talk about in school, is like, see, everyone, this is why we have society. So we don't eat each other. Like, can't you see? This is good. And I've been thinking about that a lot because not that I'm living outside of the confines of society, but in a way I am. Like, some days I don't put on real clothes. I only wear pajamas. Stuff like that has been happening. And I'm like thinking about it. And I think in reality, if we were in a situation Lord of the Flies-esque, I don't think it would ever get to like people eating each other. I think it would get people start to question what is really necessary in our lives. And I have made a list, everyone, of things that society says we need <laughs> that I've decided we don't need. Hear me out on this because I'm about to, to get ready. Get ready because I have some ideas. On all these slips of paper, I write it down every day. First one, first one, different size towels. <laughs> Everyone think about this. I've been thinking about this for at least two weeks. We have too many different sized towels. Someone one day invented a towel. That's a good invention. I think everyone has used a towel at least once in their lives. Have you ever been into someone's house? They have washcloth, that's a form of a towel, hand towels, face towels, bath towels. They're also the people that when you go to a beach, beach towel. That's, <laughs> a, that's more than five types of towels. Too many. We as society don't need that many. I am, I just want one size towel. I, at this point, am only using one towel. I throw it into the laundry and I get it. I've only used one towel, everyone. And that's all you need. And that is, that's, everyone, just think about it. Just Stop <laughs> not giving in to this consumerism. That Another thing that I wrote down is napkins. Now, you might be saying to yourself, I need a napkin. Trust me, I do. Whenever I eat, what, but here's the thing, though. 
do I need napkins or is what I really need finishing school? Because <laughs> I, have a, I have a theory that all, a lot of my problems could be solved if I just voluntarily checked myself into a finishing school for like two weeks. Why do I need a napkin? Because food gets all over my face and even my body. They teach you in finishing school how to eat. I think there should even be a finishing school for boys, whatever that is. I don't know what it is, but I think everyone could use it. Anyway, napkins, don't need them. Don't buy them. <laughs> even if you think you need them, just get some paper towels. They're basically <laughs> the better form of napkins. I've been thinking about this other thing recently, which is, have you ever heard of the phrase forgive and forget? Yes. People will always say like, oh, forgive and forget. Whoever invented that phrase must conveniently be leaving out the fact that it's like, the only thing I've forgotten is in my life are like the important things. Like, I'll remember the things that make me upset. I'll forget all the important things. Like, I don't know how to convert fractions to decimals. I've forgotten what cursive is. I'll never remember when Passover is, but I remember all the bad things. So you only <laughs> remember the bad things. You forget the good things. That's what I would like to tell the person that invented that, that <laughs> adage. At this point, I can't, as I said, I really don't know what cursive is. I can sign my name, kind of. But by signing my name, I put my pen in my hand, like so, and I do this. <laughs> that is squiggles. <laughs> what are squiggles, you ask? That's like what four-year-olds do to write or draw. That's also what I do to sign my name. It's all right, everyone. The checks, they get cashed. You know, <laughs> you sign your name on a check. The bank doesn't care what your penmanship looks like. That's something else I've learned during this time. You might be seeing in the news recently, J.K. Rowling has gotten under a mm. lot of hot water mm -hmm. because she's uh, saying some pretty terrible things. The worst part about all of that, though, in addition to the fact that everything she's saying is really terrible, is the fact that her name is J.K., which is what some people say when they're joking. So sometimes <laughs> I'll be reading her Twitter and I'll be like, J.K., insert terrible tweet. And then I'm like, what if she's just joking? And I'm like, no, she's not just joking. She's terrible. <laughs> and I really hope everyone walks away from this week realizing that not only is she terrible, the author we should have been celebrating all this time is Judy Bloom. And I know many people here know how much I love Judy Bloom. Judy Bloom wins. J.K. Rowling, see you later. Or see you never, because I'm done with you, J.K. Rowling. I also have never been a fan of yours, and Judy Bloom is much better. Judy Bloom would never tweet terrible things. Never. Thank you. Go, Judy Bloom. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to end with this. I think as human beings, for whatever reason, we have made it our, our mission in life to take care of things. You might be thinking, that's very noble, but here's my theory on all of this. Why do we do this? You know, we take care of things that don't need to be taken care of. Like, for example, has anyone in your life bought a plant recently? Mm -hmm. Why? Plants live outside, okay? <laughs> plants have lived outside successfully for billions of years. And then with somewhere within the past 200 years, we're like, let's bring them inside and see what happens. I'm going to tell you what happens, people. They die. I have never had any success in taking care of a plant. I've never seen anyone successfully take care of one. Plants outside survive tornadoes. You bring them inside with good intentions, they die. That's a sign. That's a, I, I am a plant killer, and I'm sorry <laughs> about it. But also, it's not just me, it's everyone. Everyone, things, some things, like plants, just belong outside. I also don't understand the concept of inside cats. Cats are not domesticated, <laughs> all right? Cats are not domesticated. Like, dogs are domesticated in the sense of if you are a dog owner and you one day just get up and leave your dog, your dog will be like, Jason is taking care of a plant successfully. <laughs> Jason is the one person I've met who is taking <laughs> successful care of plant, and I didn't think it could be done. But I'm really glad I told this joke. I wrote this two hours ago. <laughs> 
Jason, you need to come over and help me. Um, <laughs> something bad is happening. <laughs> but going back to my dog thing, and like dogs, they need people to take care of them. Cats, if their owner just one day left, the cat would be pretty pissed off for about 48 hours and then be like, well, whatever, would find a way to escape, <laughs> live outside except for years, for years. Turtles do that too. If you've ever had a turtle, you could just let the turtle go. It'd be like, well, okay. And it would happily go outside. Anyone, everyone, peep, some things are outside things is my big point. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that that was going to be my last joke. And guess what, everyone? I now have not, I can no longer read a piece of paper because I have one more joke. And Woo. here it is. A lot of people have tried to dedicate this time of uh, working from home to also doing projects, including home improvement projects. That is kind of silly to me because, in my opinion, the only reason to do home improvement is to have someone over to your home and impress them and be like, look at my beautiful home. But you can't have people in your home right now. <laughs> that being said, I think projects are important for your mental health. So I say do the projects that you want to do. Um, I was on Ikea because I was trying to find shelves to put up on my wall. This wall in particular, everyone. I thought shelves would look nice on it. Ikea had a lot of shelves, but I was in their home wear section and I saw a piece of wall decor. They have a poster that really struck me because the poster was floral and on it in bold lettering was, keep it happy. I was like, that sounds like a threat. <laughs> if, I, if I walked into anyone's home and thought, well, it's not think happy thoughts or try to be happy or see happiness, it says keep it happy. Like, I don't know, that just sounds too threatening for me to even feel happy. Anyway, I'm not a happy person. I am happy, everyone. Ha ha ha, look at me. So full of life and happy. Anyway, that was my time. I'm Stacey Axler. You all have been wonderful, a wonderful Ooh. audience. And I'm happy to announce that I'm the first stand-up performing. Me, your host, Stacey Exler. Hey. I have some topics to talk to you all about today. First is, who has been... Oh, I love the little clap emoji. Thank you. <laughs> who here has been watching videos on YouTube, like how-to videos, to learn how to do something during this time? Wow, no one. Okay, well, really, I'm a, here's the thing, everyone. I really wanted to, I wanted to use this time to better myself, but I set out with that goal back in March, and it's now July, and I'm, I've stayed pretty stagnant, but here's something, thank you, Lauren, here's something that, you know how sometimes you're watching a video, especially like an extreme video, I'll lay it out as clearly as I can. I thought this would be a great time to try to learn parkour. Parkour <laughs> is a, if you don't know what parkour is, which I think most of you do, but if you do not, it is an extreme sport in which you try to challenge yourself to go from point A to point B using only your body. So, for example, normally if I was walking across my floor, and I saw a chair blocking my path, I would be like, it doesn't matter, I'll walk around the chair. In parkour, you jump over the chair, or you slide under the chair, you just find an extreme way to do it. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of these parkour videos because I thought it would be fun to try to pick up some moves, and the only thing I've managed to pick up is that a common theme is that all these videos, they have a disclaimer at the beginning, and they say, don't try this at home. <laughs> and the more I watch these videos, the more I realize, you know, people who do parkour must be really optimistic because I don't know when I'd ever think to try this at home. <laughs> like, these people are diving off of trains, scaling buildings. It's like, I can barely use my toaster without injury, so. Anyway, I've moved on from parkour. Now my, my current obsession is tiny food. If you haven't looked it up, very satisfying. I love little tiny food videos. 
Oh my gosh. So who watched Hamilton the other day? It went on Disney Plus. Okay, everyone, only one person I saw watched Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton is, here's the thing about Hamilton. I love Hamilton. Huge Hamilton fan. I love everything about it. Yay, Jason, you watched it. Great. I, here's the thing though about Hamilton. Hamilton came out in 20, and I'm the type of person who, I do not like liking things other people like. I, like, I try to be as, as subversive as, as possible. So back in 2015, when Hamilton came out, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is one of the best musicals ever. I was like, yeah, right. I don't believe that. I didn't listen to it for weeks. But also, on the other side of my brain, I was like, I know musicals, and it's probably not the best musical ever. I broke down one day, listened to it while I was at work. I didn't get any work done that day. I just sat at my desk listening to Hamilton. It was so cool. But here's the thing about Hamilton is that for about three years, Hamilton made musical theater cool. People finally thought musical theater was cool. And then this past December, Cats came out and ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really salty about that because finally I did musical theater all throughout high school and when I was in college. I've always been that theater person and I've always been looked upon as not cool. And then Hamilton came out and everyone's like, oh my God, Hamilton is so cool. Now I can see why you kept going to those, those Broadway shows. And it's like, yeah, I went to those shows because they're cool. And then Ken's came out and everyone's like, oh no, we were right. <laughs> not only not cool it's for freaks here's the thing though i want to say this right now i like cats and i think cats is really valid i like cats so much and i knew i was going to say this i wore this leopard shirt <laughs> no <laughs> <they don't. laughs> here's what i'm gonna say about cats people didn't like it when the movie came out with judy dench and idris elba but here's what I think. Did they know? Did they, I don't think anyone even read what Cats was. I think they saw Idris Elba and was like, yep, I'm going to go to that. And my, the number one complaint that I thought when I talked to people about Cats, they were like, it was just too weird. And it's like, yeah, it's a musical with cats. They're singing. It's kind of like if I were to years ago be like, you know what? Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone just came out. I haven't ever read it, and I don't like sorcery, but I'm gonna see it. And then I would just go in and see it and be disappointed. I think that's what happened to all these people who saw Cats only for Idris Elba. I think most people honestly saw it because they heard he was wearing skin-tight clothing, and then they're like, you know what? It wasn't good, and it's like, it is what it is. Cats is cats. It's about a bunch of singing cats. You know what? If you don't like that, something's wrong. <laughs> That's something that you have to make peace. <laughs> Thank you, okay. You have to make peace with yourself because I don't know what. Anyway, everyone, just give it a try is what I'm trying to say. Yes, really try to approach cats with an open mind. <laughs> try. I have read, I, the other day, you know how sometimes this phenomenon happens where you're reading an article on the internet and it's so ridiculous you think it's from The Onion, but then it's not an Onion article, it's just a real life one. <laughs> I was reading one the other day where it was, uh, people are complaining that wearing masks on your face give you acne, and like, you know what, some people just live to complain. Some people just like to, I think some people want to have complaints, like, People are literally dying, and someone's like, you know what, I too am upset about something. The <laughs> acne on my face that comes from this mask. The other point that I had about that is, I don't know about everyone else here, but in order for me typically to get out of my apartment and go to work, I obviously put on clothing, but I'm mostly looking at my face and how my face looks. And now that I'm wearing this mask, it takes me less and less time to like get ready and go. Cause I'm like, you know what? People can't even see me behind this mask. Mm -hmm. Typically it would take me about maybe 30 minutes to get ready. 
In the past few months, it's like 15 minutes. If I wear sunglasses, that's even less of my face. We're talking five minutes. If I put a hat on my head, forget about it. I'm literally rolling, rolling out. I may not even wear a bra. That's a little scandalous. I don't usually have <laughs> scandalous humor, but whatever. We're all turning over a new leaf tonight. <laughs> I also have always had acne. The mask, I, and that's something else I want to say to those people. The mask probably isn't doing it. My acne is as bad as it's always been. I'm almost 30 years old, still getting acne all over my face. Nothing can be done. I've given up all hope. <laughs> Everyone always said, it'll go away, Stacey. No, it will not. When I was a kid, I really always tried to ha like ha get perfect grades. I was like always very like, I was like a, not a perfectionist, I would say, but I always like to get A's and be friends with my teachers and kind of be like a teacher's pet. And they like train you in school to really care about things like grade and getting like grades and like getting the perfect score. Now that I'm an adult, I'm like, I don't know what my life is because no one's giving me a grade. I only have one score, which is a credit score. Here's something you should know about your credit score. No matter how hard you try, and I try really hard, everyone, it will never be perfect. There is nothing you can do to make your credit score because anything you try to do to make it perfect, it's like it detracts from the score. You're like, oh, I'm going to spend less money on my credit card. They're like, you haven't spent enough money on your credit card. You spend more money. They're like, you spend too much. You cannot win. <laughs> it's like they design the credit score as this arbitrary number just to make you miserable if you're a person like me that likes to be perfect. Yeah. The other day I was talking, I got an email and I mentioned to my friend, I was like, oh, my administrative assistant emailed me. And she was like, I didn't know you had an administrative assistant. And I was like, oh, it's not my, my particular one. It's the administrative assistant for the office. My friend was like, that, that makes sense because I can't imagine you with an administrative assistant. And then for the next 48 <laughs> hours, I tried to, I know that's a little bit of a burn, one for my friend, but two, I was like, you know what, I agree. And here's why I never imagined myself with an administrative assistant. Here's why. I love control. And I can't imagine having anything for my administrative assistant to do. Like, I imagine part of the things that you ask them to do is like, can you help me do, one, I would never ask anyone to do anything for me. But if this person was like, hey, Stacy, do you want me to make copies? I'd be like, no, I need to make my own copy. I don't know what tasks I would be able to delegate because I can't delegate to people. And I think what I'm trying to say is help me. I, I need help. I need help uh, delegating. Uh, I have one last thing to say. I've been ordering a lot of stuff online lately because it's the only thing that makes me a little bit happy. That's not true. It does make me happy though. Love ordering stuff online. A lot of things you can order online, people are like, you should order, like, you know, Amazon will recommend things to you, or like, you'll get little ads that follow you around the internet, which are called cookies. Anyway, so a big thing that keeps following me around is ads for duvets. Raise your hand if you, like me, until two weeks ago, thought duvets were spoken as duvets. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, thank you, Sai. Si. Thank you. Anyway, so that was a bed. It wasn't. Here's one thing, though. Fancy bedding is what we're talking about here, which is Target and similar stores will try to sell fancy bed stuff, like silk sheets that have a thousand thread count. And here's my thing. I'm not a frugal person in the traditional sense or in any sense. But I am a person, I am a person who likes to question why they're spending money. And why would I spend more money on sheets that have a higher thread count if I'm going to be unconscious while I'm using them? Like, let's think about this. Like, it's like, I'd rather spend more money on a fun thing or a nice thing that I can enjoy while conscious than... To, 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 to buy sheets that I'm supposed to, like, something about this logic doesn't make sense. Anyway, if you bought a duvet, return it. Return it because you don't need it, and they really should put a pronunciation on that product because, anyway.
anyway, don't don't go into a conversation saying the word duvet because you won't be able to live it down. Uh, that's the real reason I haven't left my apartment. Uh, anyway, no, it's not. Anyway, everyone, you've been a wonderful audience. I've been Stacey Axler. Thank you so much. Thank Yay. you.